Writer Ministries, a ministry where health, wealth, and wisdom prevails. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Robert. Praise the name of Jesus. We're in class number one called Righteousness. Amen? Your freedom in Christ. Your freedom in Christ. And, I've, and I, I came across this and I asked the Holy Spirit, I says, what about this? He says, there are many people who don't understand their freedom in Christ. They just got saved, but they don't understand what happened with that. And this teaching will encourage you, teach you more, and bring you into a position of understanding righteousness. And then your fruits will go forth. Father God, we ask you right now in Jesus' name to give us that insights that we need. So Holy Spirit, we thank you for the revelation knowledge. Yes, the illumination. Yes, and the comparison in the word that will teach us and lead us to more knowledge about Jesus. We give you praise and glory. And all the people of God said yes and amen. So in righteousness, what are some of your expectations? You don't even expect something because you're righteous. What's some expectations? That's a quite, it's, a, it's an interesting thought, amen? In the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 21, that as sin has reigned unto death, even so might race reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. And that verse just enlightens your eyes if you're understanding. So, grace, unmerited favor given to us by the Lord, you don't deserve it. Grace reigns through righteousness. I say, thank you, Jesus. The grace of God is upon you because you're understanding your freedom in Christ. Amen. So righteousness is the ability to stand in the presence of God without any sense of guilt, without any sense of inferiority. Justice, sin never, ever existed. Amen? Righteousness is right standing with God. Say, thank you, Lord. Isn't that exciting? Okay? So we want to we wanna move on and just learn a lot more. Okay? So what are some of the effects of guilt? Or shame. A lot of people go, ooh, I did that, I should have done it. Shame means disturbed by the painful feeling of guilt, incompetence, dishonor, disgrace, indecency, and blameworthy. Guilt means the act of having done something wrong by sinning. A conduct involving moral, ethical, or legal breach. So those are some of the definitions. There should be no shame associated with anything in your life. And that uh, is like, really? Yeah, because I'm saved. It is just fact without the sense of guilt. It's just like information coming to you. Amen. Living as though your past history is not having any effect on you. How many know you did some stuff that you shouldn't have? And people will be, yeah, I know what you were like. I'll take, for example, brothers and sisters haven't seen each other for a while. What do they talk about? Everything when they were a kid. What's that got to do with now? See, you're getting in there and they're trying to bring up shame and guilt and all this stuff you did wrong. Who's talking to you? The enemy. So no, I'm the righteousness of God. In Jesus' name. It shuts that down. So, there are two kinds of righteousness. There's the self-righteous by man, which means an effort to achieve the recognition and acceptance of God, trying to fulfill God's word in order to relieve the effects or the penalty of sin. Always questioning, are you worthy enough? Demonstrates itself by strict religious practices and a high-mindedness. You're going to run across a lot of people like that. Now, the righteousness of God, it's not earned, merited, or deserved. It is a gift from God imputed to us by what Jesus did, not by what we did. Okay? You can do nothing to have righteousness given to you. Nothing. 
Say, thank you, Lord. So righteousness of God is the key revelation for us to be able to walk in faith, health, prosperity, victory over sin, victory over Satan, safety, peace, all the promises of God, and fellowship with God. Say, thank you, Lord. That's good news. So our expectations. Righteousness revelation will be absolutely change you. How many want to be changed? You need to have God give you revelation knowledge of the righteousness that he's made you. Say, thank you, Lord. Amen. You're going to change in the way you think and feel about inferiority, insecurity, fear, inherit eternal fears, anticipation of things going wrong. All right. So you got to remember in Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Because of what? Your righteousness. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So the righteousness that God gives to you can shut down the voice of people speaking negative against you. Amen. So what do we got to do? We have to declare that I expect to receive. You have to speak it out. I expect to receive. What? Revelation knowledge. Perspective. It's a new way of seeing things. An experience. Results from God's action. These are some expectations. I'm expecting to receive revelation knowledge. Amen. Revelation knowledge means to reveal, unveil, or disclose by direct encounter of the Holy Spirit. He takes things never seen by natural senses and discloses it to you. It's not received by your normal senses or your logical progression of thoughts. Your senses or mind will never tell you that you are righteous. So how do you receive this revelation knowledge? You say, well, Pastor Robert, show me Colossians 1, 26. Amen. All right. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Say, thank you, Lord. I want God to show me the riches that's in Christ that's alive in me. And when you start identifying with the Lord, what he says you have, your life changes. So the word mystery talks about information disclosed by God. God alone gives the revelation by his Holy Spirit. Amen? In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Verse 13 and 14. Which things also we speak. So I got to speak things. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but what the Holy Ghost teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Amen? But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Amen? Discerned means scrutinized, examined, and investigated. Say, thank you, Lord. Now, in 1 John chapter 2 and 27, but the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as is taught you, you shall abide in him. Say, thank you, Lord. This is exactly where you need to be living, is with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So God requires an open heart of expectation. Oh, I sure hope so. No, I know I'm getting it. I prayed for it and God answers my prayers. See the difference? I'm expecting to receive. Set yourself and focus on the Lord and tell you are made, tell you are made to understand. See, look at everybody look at me and say, when I was a kid, I didn't spell something correctly, so the teacher told me to go to the blackboard and write it up there a hundred times. Was the teacher making me to understand how to spell that perfect word? The Holy Spirit is going to make you to understand 
until you get it. Say, so how, do, how does he do that? It's by revelation of the scripture that you meditate on will bring forth that information. So what happened to Daniel? In Daniel chapter 10, verse 12 through 14. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Amen. Now I am come to make thee understand. What shall befall thy people in the latter days? For yet the vision is for many days. Amen. So Daniel got a cry of his heart to the Lord. The Lord answered it. He answered it the first day. Say, thank you, Lord. And God answers yours too. Now in the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and 145 through 147. I cried with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord, I will keep thy statutes. I cried unto thee, save me, and I shall keep thy testimonies. I prevented the dawning of the morning and cried, I hope, in thy word. So you cry out with your heart. You're speaking to the Lord. I need this. I really have to have understanding. That's a cry. Amen? So with all this, you must meditate. Meditate. Meditate means to mutter, to speak, to roll over again and again and again. You know, when you finally get it, it goes, yeah, that's right. In Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. Amen. Isn't that good news? Did I say it? Isn't that good news? Amen. All right, thank you so much. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Say, thank you, Lord. So the biblical process to manifest his word is meditation, revelation, motivation, action, and fruit of God's word. So meditation produces revelation. Amen? Revelation produces motivation. Motivation produces action. Action produces fruit or results in Jesus name now this is to be continued let's pray father God thank you for opening up our eyes of our understanding for expectations in the Word of God we thank you for it Lord that we've just received so much already and all the people of God said yes and amen Thank you for watching and participating with Pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching. As you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministries. We're glad that you watched our latest video and we want to invite you to become a partner with our ministry. Partnerships mean that you pray one for another. We pray for you. You pray for us. You send us a seed offering, we'll send you a DVD. Our DVDs will help you to become ministers of God. And as a partner, we'll also notify you when we have our next healing explosions in your area. Or we'll let you know where they are so you can come and participate with us in Jesus' name. We want to teach you to become God's minister in healing the sick, casting out devils, the things that Jesus did. Amen. Our ministry is to help the body of Christ to grow and become what God has called each person to be in Jesus' name. So we're asking you to be part of our 250 partners this year. Let us know. So give us a call at 503-652-2650 or get on our website and check out rider.org. You'll be surprised of all the goodies we have on there just for you. So we thank you for being our partners. We invite you to come back and see us more often. God bless you.
We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at writer.org. That's writer.org. And join us again next time for more of Writer Ministries with Pastor Robert Writer.